confused a little bit. Weird. Whoops. Yeah, it was windy, loud, there were children running around, there was rain, everything. And I forgot my script. So I decided to record this video back at home. Hi guys, I'm Carolina and I work with data. If you're new to this channel, subscribe for content about software engineering, data engineering, machine learning and life. The topic of today's video is how I made the career switch to programming, you know, data science, data engineering, call it as you like. I do a couple of different data related things and how I made that switch from economics because that's what I initially studied. But before I explain how I made the switch, I'd like to mention why I started doing economics instead of computer science straight away. Fun fact, when I was applying to universities back at high school, I actually applied to a computer science degree and I got accepted. I remember it was summer right before the start of the course and I just started feeling so, so anxious about doing computer science. I was like, can I even handle that? Like, am I smart enough to do computer science? Like I've always been this humanistic person that enjoys, you know, art and writing and maybe sciences or biology, but never pure technical, maths-y kind of thing and that's how I imagined computer science. I, I thought that you need to be good at maths. I, I thought that you have to be good at problem solving and maths. Well, I wasn't wrong when it comes to problem solving because that's exactly what computer science is about, but you don't really need to know maths that much and the maths was admittedly one of my weakest points. So I came to that realization, you know, a couple of weeks before the course began. I was like, I, I don't know maths. So what am I even doing? I'm just gonna die. So I chickened out. I signed out. I actually did. Crazy. I, I it's beyond my imagination at the moment. I, I, sometimes when you don't have enough information when you make some stupid assumptions in life you can make really bad decisions like i made that assumption that maths is important and that i need to be excellent at maths to do computer science and on that premise i signed out of computer science degree whereas in reality it is not even true so you know as i said i thought okay maths not for me i don't know maths hmm Let's study economics. And of course, back then I thought economics is about money, business, not about maths at all. Well, it turned out that economics is purely based on maths and that I am sentencing myself to death. Brilliant, brilliant. I thought economics will teach me how to, how to create passive income. And passive income is actually a cool concept. You know, it, it is basically income you get while you're sleeping. So it's like, when you get a dividend or when you rent out a home that you own and someone pays you rent. You don't go to work, but you get money. And yeah, I was, I was, you know, interested in all those concepts of how you can make money, how you can invest, how you can build your wealth, how to just, you know, do stuff like that. But I was wrong, very, very wrong. Economics turned out to be an extremely, extremely dry, the driest of dry subjects. It is purely about theory. It is purely based on thousands and thousands of assumptions. It is just extremely not useful. And most importantly, what I really don't like about economics is that it doesn't allow you to build things, to create things, to like take action, to do stuff. I like action. I like movement. I like doing things, building things, creating things, seeing things come to life. So here we come to the meat of this video. How did I make the switch? Okay, so first of all, throughout those three years studying economics, even though I was studying economics, I would take a couple of Python courses online or even C++ courses. I would just, you know, explore all the content online, like on Coursera and Co um, Codecademy and all those various course providers. 
I would just try and learn technology because I was curious about it and it was so appealing and it was in such a stark contrast to what economics was offering. I was basically mesmerized by how many opportunities programming gives you, I mean, knowing how to, how to code. I would imagine how many side hustles you can build, how many, how many web apps you can build, apps, how many things you can develop. And I was like, I want to do that. I want to learn how to do that. So as I said, I was doing some courses online just for my own benefit, for my own understanding. And you know, I, I liked it. It turned out to be fun and it didn't involve any maths or like very little. So obviously my previous fears were completely unjustified. Also around that time, because it was, you know, about five years ago, the whole data science hype emerged and I was even more drawn to it because it was cool, it was new, it was like there was potential in it. So I was even more curious about technology and what you can do with data science. So I thought to myself, okay, but how do I actually get myself closer to that? Because if I don't do anything, if I just, you know, carry on doing some online courses, I'm not going to find a job in programming, in technology. Online courses are not enough and this is not enough of a signal for employers. So I thought to myself, okay, it's probably time for me to try and get tech internship because if I don't, then I'm going to have a hard time trying to find a full-time job after graduation. So I thought to myself, okay, what is a technology job? What is a tech area that is most related to economics? What can I do to sell my economics, econometrics knowledge as something useful for a technology position, if that makes sense? Soon I realized, that data science is actually related to economics and econometrics. Soon I realized that both are very quantitative areas. So I was like, "Woo, great. Maybe I can try and find a data science internship. And that should be probably the easiest thing to do. So that's what I did. I did find um, an internship in data science. And even though my tech skills were minimal, I only knew a little bit of Python, I didn't know much of SQL or any other technologies, like my CS computer science foundations were non-existent. I didn't understand computer science at all and I had like very little technical skills. And throughout the internship, like during the internship, I learned so much. There were a lot of very talented people around me who taught me SQL who helped me with Python, who, you know, showed me how to connect Python to a database, whatever. It was all new to me, but that internship was so eye-opening. I learned technology, some technology, and you know what? I loved every single moment. I would come back home and still think of all the problems that I'm trying to solve at work. I was super hooked. I knew that this is something that I want to carry on doing, but the internship was soon over because it was just a summer internship. So I had to find a way to get a good full-time job somewhere as a data scientist or as a data whoever person. But I knew that, you know, I have to up my game because, you know, I just did one summer internship and I don't know, I don't know if it will allow me to get a good permanent full-time data science job after graduation. Well, maybe it will, but maybe it will not. And I was so sure that I want to do it that I didn't want to take any risks. So I decided to do an additional degree in computer science. Now, I don't know if that was necessary. Maybe I could have just continue applying to full-time permanent jobs after graduation in data science with my data science in, uh, internship. Maybe that experience was enough and maybe I could have, I don't know, just continue enhancing my skills online in the meantime. And maybe I would have landed a data science job anyway, but I wanted that degree because I thought that it will create a very strong signal to employers that I am interested in technical roles, that I am technically skilled, that I combine this quantitative knowledge with the technical knowledge. So yeah, so that was a pivotal point in this whole story. I 
applied to a conversion master's degree in computer science. A conversion master's degree is, is a master's degree that you do when you had a bachelor degree, so your first degree, in a completely unrelated area. So some people, some, some of my course mates did say law or engineering or biology or some more humanistic subjects maybe i don't know like any anything and then you know you have that first degree in any subject and then you can do second degree computer science degree in computer science and they teach you from the beginning but it's a very intensive course because you know at the end of the day you end up with a master's in computer science so throughout a year because it was a 12-month course throughout a year they just try and kill you with the amount of work and with the intensity of the course and I loved it you know on one hand on the other hand I obviously hated it because I, I was dying but that's something that you know helped me to learn computer science fundamentals and that was a pivotal point because it allowed me to open myself up for strictly technology roles as well so not only data science like quant roles but also you know, software engineering, data engineering, machine learning engineering, because I learned, you know, not only Python, but I learned C++, Java, networking, algorithms, and all that. Did I have to do it? I don't think so. I probably could have done a course online on computer science fundamentals, and that would be, you know, that would give me the same amount of knowledge, I suppose. But the undeniable benefit of doing and an actual degree at an actual university was it elevates you in the eyes of the employers because it is a legit degree. So, you know, all in all, I don't regret, but I think that if you want to learn computer science fundamentals, there are plenty of decent courses online that will teach you the same knowledge for a fraction of the price, a fraction of what the master's degree cost me. I really want to forget how much I paid for this master's. Unfortunately, I can't forget because I took a loan and now I am repaying loan installments and they get deducted from my salary every month. So it is very hard to forget. So the conclusion is that I think that the easiest transfer from economics to a tech job is via data science because both are quant degrees, quant areas, and it's just the simplest thing to do. But for technical roles, like more technical roles, like software engineering, data engineering, machine learning, I think it is very useful to have some computer science fundamentals maybe not even useful but it's actually necessary to have computer science fundamentals and you can either learn them online and i don't think it's a bad way to to go about it or you can perhaps get a degree or go to a boot camp i don't know i've never been to a boot camp so obviously you can imagine that um when i enrolled in that degree program it was way easier to start applying to to the actual tech roles because you know I had that signal uh, for employers so I started applying to various positions and I just got one basically I got, I got a job as a technology graduate and that basically means that I was put on a two-year scheme where I do various technological things, for example, data science, but also data engineering, but also something related to, say, machine learning engineering or maybe software engineering. So yeah, I just do a variety of things. I rotate through various teams, various areas. That's why I, you know, I know a little bit of that and a little bit of this and I'm not like a data engineer or I'm not like a data scientist. I'm I just do a variety of things. So yeah, I could have applied to a different job and many of my um, course mates went on to do, you know, various, various roles in technology like machine learning engineering, like purely that or purely data science or purely um, software engineering. So, you know, that really depended on what people wanted, what people liked. I am personally happy that I went down that route of a rotational scheme which gives me an exposure to a variety of technologies but after that masters 
um, many doors were open. Yeah, so that's it. I hope it summarizes my journey well. If you have any questions, as always, let me know in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. I make videos about everything that I have exposure to. Data science, data engineering, machine learning engineering. You know, I just talk about my world and my world revolves around technology at the moment. So there we go. And I will see you next Thursday. Bye.